Help us live in that faith. In the great name of Jesus Christ, we pray this together. Amen. Our song of celebration can be found in the Glory to God Hymnal, page 100, if you have a copy of that. The dial true words are going to be up here on the screen. Uh, and the song is, My Soul Cries Out with a Joyful Shout for a Camp Pool of the
Oh, well, I can do that. And love your neighbor as yourself. God, that can't be right. Look, put me in charge of who lives and who dies. No! <laughs> okay, well, what about letting me decide who's right and who's wrong? Still no. Okay, well then, put me in charge of who gets to be in heaven. I know I can be really good at that. Definitely not. Then this doesn't make any sense. Your word says here, I am to master the earth and take charge of creation. What does love have to do with that? If you love me, then you'll take care of what's important to me. You'll look after the earth. You'll look after my church. You'll look after each other. If I do things your way, I might be the only one doing them. And that is just not fair. Everybody taking advantage of me? God, that is not my job. My child, that's your only job. Okay. So, what does it mean to own something? Make <laughs> payments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, it's, that's true, right? <laughs> but in what way? It belongs to you. If, okay, it belongs to you. How do you know that? You might have a receipt for it. You might have a receipt for it? Okay. So that's good. Okay, how many of you would say you own your lives? <laughs> and do you have a receipt? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, then what, what does it mean? Okay. So you can possess things, right? It can belong to me. I can do what I want to with it. That means I possess it, right? But, but another way to talk about ownership, right, is to say I own the problem. I own responsibility. I've come to the point in my life where I've owned my faith. I'm not really meaning the same thing, right? It's a little different. It's not so much about possession as it is well, as it is what I'm willing to take responsibility for. See, when we talk about the creation story, it's more than just a good bedtime story, right? It's setting us up for something. And it's setting us up for this, this idea, this foundational belief that everything begins with God. All of it. We own nothing. We have been given Everything. Now, you know, as a practical matter, right, in the end, we end up talking about um, when it comes to things that we possess or own, we end up talking about rights, right? I have a right to this thing, or I have the right to do what I want to with my own car, you know, or whatever. Um, we, we can disagree about that on the road, but it's interesting that we forget to talk about rights and responsibility. Because it's not simply what I get to do. Because I'm not the only one living here. Right? My rights, uh, I've heard a professor tell me, um, end where yours begin. Do you agree with that? Yes. You think that's true? Okay. And for a long time, so did I. But as I read scripture, I'm starting to get the impression that God seems to think that our rights overlap. And it's because of that responsibility thing. If I'm hurting, that might not be your fault, but it still might be your responsibility. If I've done something wrong, you might not be guilty of that. But it still might be something that you have to help with. When we think about our own church, when we think about the years that we've been here, and can anybody do the math how long we've been here? <laughs> yeah, it, it's, in, it's in your bulletins, it's in the stats, 64 six years. Well done. <laughs> But in 264 years, certainly we have stayed the same that entire time, right? <laughs> Don't you think? No. No. We've seen terrific changes since this church was incepted in 1755. The world has changed since 1755. We moved here in 2010. The world has changed since 2010. 
And now we're in 2020. And we're not just faced with our church's future, but we're faced with what does the future look like for all of us. God wants us, Genesis makes clear, wants us as partners. Us. With all of our faults and nobility, with all of our mistake making, and, and, and feeling like we're in charge, our healing charity, our harm causing, our peacemaking. God wants us as partners. And so the question becomes not so much what do we possess, because even authority itself doesn't really actually belong to us. It's entrusted to us. You know, um, how many of you have a driver's license? And that driver's license gives you the right to drive in North Carolina, right? Privilege. It's a privilege. Don't I own this road? No. I mean, especially when I'm driving on it like a boss. I mean, right? Well, then what does it mean? What does it mean that I had that license? You're trusted with the safety. Who's trusting me? Yeah, actually. Everybody's trusting me. Whether they want to or not. Right? And the same thing is true of our faith. We didn't offer it. We didn't come up with it. It was given. And that faith that has been given to us, that power that has been shared with us, is, is something that we're supposed to do something with. It's been entrusted to us. But we don't own it. God still owns it. And so the question is not whether or not we are in charge. It's whether or not we are trustworthy with the authority that has been given to us. Are you trustworthy with the time that has been given to you? Are you trustworthy with the talents and the abilities that have been given to you? Are you trustworthy with the money that you have been blessed with? Are you trustworthy with the opportunities for ministry that are presented to you on a daily basis? And they are. Because, y'all, we really were meant to change the world. We were. All of us. We really are partners with God in creation. And yes, that means that when we see that something is wrong, we are to take responsibility. We are to own it. If we think that it's wrong for people to go hungry, guess what? We need to do something about it. We can whine and complain about how bad the world is. We can talk about all the things that we think God should be doing. But guess what? God is waiting on us. God is looking at us because God empowered us. So, if all of that's true, then why is vengeance off limits from the Romans' past? Why, why is that off limits? Why does God say, vengeance is mine? Yes, I want you as a partner, but no, 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 you can't be trusted with vengeance. <laughs> why? We, we don't know the whole story. And because vengeance is beyond our limits. If someone hurts one of my daughters, I can't hurt them equivalently, even if they have a daughter, because they don't have a daughter like Rachel or Natalie. There is no such thing as me getting even. It's one of the fallacies that Jesus went to town with in his Sermon on the Mount. You've heard it said, an eye for an eye. And by the way, Moses gave you that law because you guys were nuts. Because I mean, back in the day, right, people would, like, if I stole your cow, people would then go, well, I'm going to burn down your entire farm. And Moses was like, oh, okay. Everybody just, eye for an eye, just slow it down. But Jesus is saying, no, 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 you need to take it further. We cannot be trusted with vengeance. It belongs to God. And it's not like anything we can do can ever make up for what's wrong. The only thing we have the power to do is to choose. To choose whether or not to do right, to be better. 
or not. That's what we own. That's what we actually have. And so what actually belongs to us is a choice. It's always a choice to take what has been given and to act trustworthy or to forget that all that we really have belongs to God. And so brothers and sisters, let us remember always. Let us remember what actually belongs to us. In so doing, let us choose what God would have us choose. In the name of the one who just loves us. Amen. So our song of unity might be unfamiliar to some of you. Um, but it does repeat. We're going to be singing it vociferously, and so you can listen, but we do invite you to sing along. The words will be displayed. The song is, If We Are the Body. <coughs>
take what has been given and to act trustworthy. And to never forget that everything we have belongs to God. And so brothers and sisters in Christ, let us live accordingly. And as you do so, may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds this day and forevermore.